St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the... Remember that? That he has given to me my body and soul, my eyes, my ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and he still takes care of them. Luther says. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides for me all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger. He guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy, without any merit, any worthiness within me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. And what does Luther then say? This is most certainly true. So, Abba Father, blessed Father's Day, we praise, we glorify you. I was struck by something in the reading of the gospel for the day. Did you catch it? Did you maybe hear it? We see this vision of a poor man who is, who is overcome with demons. It kind of reminds us of the Old Testament figure of Job. How terrible to be that tormented in life, to have people flee from you, who are afraid of you, their safety and well-being is not good when they are around you. How tragic to not be able to go home where you might succumb to those demons and you might hurt somebody who you love very much. Such a life. But then this man meets Jesus, we hear. And Jesus drives out this, these demons that were in this. He heals this man in a dramatic fashion. And after responding with joy in his newly granted freedom and devotion to his leader, his healer, this man decides to follow Jesus. Perhaps he wants to become another one of the itinerant disciples of Jesus. But Jesus says what? He says, no, no. I have something for you to do. Did you catch it? Go home. He says, go home, go back to your home, and I want you there to declare what, my, what God has done for you. 
So we are told in the gospel that the man went away proclaiming throughout the city how much, and in his home, how much Jesus had done for him. Maybe he was a father. Maybe he did have a family with children. The text says, Jesus, with the power of his heavenly father and ours, healed this holy man and gave him a job. Go home. Become my servant there. Serve me there. That's our tasks. That's our blessings as fathers. Well, I got to ask somebody. I've had, I'm a father five times over. I did not receive an instruction book when each of those five kids came along. Any of you? Did you get an instruction book? I never did. Nobody told me how to be a dad. Oh, people have written books about being a father. <laughs> but I didn't get an instruction book. So how do I become a dad? How do I function as a dad? I need to then look around. And my heavenly father provides instruction. So I suggest that we go to the Old Testament book of Genesis today, and we find a story there with which you, you might be familiar. It's a story of deception. It's a story of cheating. You probably already know the story of Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. Boys, they're twins. Esau and Jacob. Both were loved by dad and mom. But like the Smothers brothers, mom likes you best. She considered Esau a little bit stronger than Jacob. So she tricks dad, Isaac, into giving Esau the double inheritance that belongs to the firstborn. Hmm. What did I just say? She tricked Esau and had given Jacob, the secondborn, the firstborn blessing. Esau should have gotten that double blessing. She tricks him, Isaac, the dad, and dad blesses Jacob. It's in that blessing that I find instruction for us as how to be a dad, how to be a parent in our modern families. The blessing goes like this. Come here, my son, Isaac says. Jacob comes, went to him, went to him and kissed him. Hmm. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. That's the blessing. In his book entitled The Blessing, Dr. Gary Smalley writes this, quote, this blessing contains four ingredients that ought to be present in every home today. Four ingredients. And when those four ingredients are present and practiced consistently, then our children grow up in solid, secure, and, conf and confident in themselves, able to go out into the world and function normally. End of quote. Four ingredients. First one, meaningful touch. Meaningful touch. Jacob went close to his father, Isaac, and Isaac touched him. Come here. And he kisses him. Such is not an isolated incident in the Bible. Almost every time a blessing takes place in the Old Testament scriptures, especially, it involves touching, the laying on of hands, a kiss, an embrace, something that conveys acceptance and love. New Testament. Jesus, we read in Mark, people brought their children to Jesus. What? To bless them. And what does he do? He touches them and blesses them. It's in that touch that they, are feel, that they feel loved and accepted. It's important that we do that in our homes as well. You know, when children are small, you can't get enough of them, and they can't get enough of you. You cuddle, you nibble, you hug, you do all sorts of things. They don't understand words. They do understand that contact, that contact. Hard to do that when they're 17, 18, 19 years old. They, uh. But there is the touch on the shoulder. There are those things. Touch, one way of being fatherly. Second ingredient, spoken message of affection. We touch, but we speak. 
Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field. I don't think we could get by with that today. Hug our teenage sons and daughters. You smell like a gymnasium today. It's not going to work. But an, out, but an old outdoorsman like Isaac could smell the smell of what he thought was his outdoorsman son Esau. Ah, the smell of the field to him was a great smell. It was a compliment. It was a positive message that communicated his love and affection to his outdoorsman son. You smell good, he says. However, you and I as parents become too busy today to smell or acknowledge. We're in a hurry. Sometimes we only criticize and, 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 and talk bad to our kids. We, we don't remind them. Why did you spill that milk again? Don't eat so much. It's not going to be that healthy for you. Don't be so lazy. Come on. Too much of that and what happens? Those kids that we were nubbling and hugging and all that, they move away. They move away. Now, there's always room for constructive criticism, is there not? There's always room for instruction. But it's more important that we communicate a, a love that says, you are worth so much. You are such a good son, a, a good daughter. I'm glad that God gave you to us. Father's Day is special just because you, my daughter, my son, are here. Third, attributing high value, attributing high value. Isaac says, may God give you of heaven's dew and of earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new, word, a new wine. In other words, you are special, and God will give you the best he has to give. You and I are constantly told that you and I have to have a good positive, give our children a good positive self-image to, to build up their esteem, and we should. It is important to teach our child, you are so valuable that God even came into the world and died on the cross for you. And that doesn't just happen with words. We teach high value in a number of ways. For example, a lot of times when a child comes to us, yeah, we're busy, we have an eye on the TV, the golf game or the football game, whatever, and one eye on them. We can't concentrate actually, truly, on what they're saying. How better it would be if we would at least once a day turn off the TV or the game console and just focus, focus on them. Do you ever look in your child's eyes? They sparkle. They've got something they need to tell you. They have something that they... They love to share with you. So look at them and let them have their say. Fourth, picture a glorious future for them. Picture a glorious future. Isaac said, may nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers. May the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. Here Isaac is helping his son raise his sights. See the future. It's bright. It's like a commencement speech, is it not? We all have had commencement speeches. It is partly our responsibility, is it not, to raise the sights of our, of our family, of our children, as fathers, mothers, as parents, as father figures? Proverbs. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. In other words, teach them the things of God, and when they are old, they will not forsake them. You and I, as fathers, as parents, are to help our children discover their niche in life, discover who they are, why they have been made. And we are here to help them understand that, as Pastor Tim says often, to help them understand that they are named, claimed, and aimed by God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You and I are asked to train our children to discover their talents, discover their gifts, and what they are suited to do in life. 
We're to counsel them, guide them in discovering what God intends for them to do with their gifts. Not so much direct them into what we think they should do or be. So there it is. That which holds fathers and mothers, that which holds a family together is a meaningful touch, a spoken message, attributing high value and picturing a glorious future. And our God the Father is the perfect parent who has conveyed to us all of those ingredients in his blessing to us. There's a Bible verse that says it perfectly. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A touch, a welcome. He even welcomes you and me to his table he invites God the Father, invites you and me to feast with him. Our loving Father reaches down. He touches us, bread and wine. He tells us how valuable we are. This is for you. And he helps us to see the glorious future that we have in him. So, Lord, take my hand and lead me. And let's have a blessed Father's Day. Amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, 
You hear the cries of all those who seek you. Equip your church with pastors, teachers, and lay leaders who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of an eternal home with you. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed, exemplified by the storms in the far west and the midwest and the fires in the southwest. And help us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy your creation. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this weekend of Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. You hear the cries of those who suffer, and we pray that you will come to the aid of all who are homeless, hungry, and sick. And especially do we lift up the people of the Ukraine. Bring them peace, that they may know your loving presence. Oh God, you hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. We give thanks for all the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all that you had done for them. At the last day, Unite us with them as we make our eternal home with you. O oh God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers as well as those silent in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Several important announcements to be shared with you this day. First of all, our sincere thanks to Pastor Wayne Haight for being with us today to proclaim the message for us. Congratulations, obviously, to all who celebrate Father's Day. As, as one prayer that I ran across cited, we give our thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. We praise those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. And we praise those fathers who have died, but who live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. And yes, Heavenly Father, we give thanks for you above all. The Church Council for 2022 and 23 has been elected as in the it was printed in the bulletin announcements that went out to you both by email and are available in the announcement sheets at both doors this morning past president will be Becky Leefeld president elect is Dale Mittler I'm part pardon me president is Dale Mittler president elect is Carolyn Martin Treasurer Tim Scamfer, Secretary Peggy Lucas, and council members at large include Jim Bach, Rachel Gorsuch, Amy Gruenberg, Vic, Vicki Rogers, Brad Schroer, and Sean Verhoff. We thank all of them for their willingness to serve as our church council for the coming year. In the Announcement sheets, again, available at both doors or you've received them online. There is an, a, a request from the Adult Sunday School Committee. Um, just four questions they ask you to answer and, and to uh, submit. It's a survey. Uh, it can be done online or you can uh, take the sheets home with you, fill them out, bring them back next week. Just a little tiny corner column there. Um, put them in an offering plate next week. Send them to the church. Uh, or like I say, check it online. 
but we appreciate your response to those four questions regarding adult education. And some of you over the year or throughout the year would like to know when they can purchase uh, t-shirts or sweatshirts or caps or whatever, polo shirts that say Christ Lutheran Church on them. And you've seen some folks have already gotten them. Uh, they are available this summer um, until or through next Sunday. So if you're interested in purchasing anything, we call it spirit wear. Uh, if you're interested, again, that notice is in those printed announcements or it's available online as well. And then just one final note, our good friends at Faith Lutheran Church in Whitehall, our neighbors just to the immediate east, um, on July 10th, are having a 5K run and walk to benefit Lutheran social services and food pantries. If we have any runners in the crowd or walkers and that would be interested in uh, serving in that way as partners with Faith Lutheran Church, um, I've got the notice, check with me and or check with their website uh, to enroll with them. Many important announcements, we call them to your attention, and now we listen to the offertory. Please stand for confession and Holy Communion.
We come before God and each other in a time of confession. Gracious God, source of all life, we come before you in need of healing. The healing of our bodies and souls, the healing of our relationships, the healing of our pride and fear and apathy. We know that with you, nothing is impossible. We pray that you will heal us, that you will heal our world, so that we will be freed to serve and love and dream and be as Christ calls us. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let go of the demons that may bind you in sorrow. Christ has broken those bands and reaches out in love for you. Receiving God's loving and healing blessings, for they are given especially for you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder, as you come forth for Holy Communion, as we will invite you in a moment, uh, you will receive one of these little chalices. At the top is the wafer, uh, and at the bottom is the, the grape juice. Obviously, you've got to peel back both for access to the bread and to the grape juice. You're welcome to do that standing or kneeling here at the communion rail, or you can take it back to the, to the pew and commune yourself there. But know that as you do that, this is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ given for you.
please stand and sing along. Oh, you body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> On that great note, go in peace. Serve with the healing love of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.